Hi everyone, welcome to S4 Sharnia Science Classes. Today we are going to discuss about the phylum as Helminthes, otherwise known as the roundworms. You can see that we already learned about the phylum Platyhelminthes, which is known as the flatworms. Here we are going to learn about the phylum as Helminthes, right, which is known as the round worms. You can see here if you are going for the general characteristics, these all worms are actually round in their structure. That means if you are taking the cross section, you can see that there will be a round like structure. So that's why they are known as round worms. If you are going for the general of that are grades of organization, then you can see that they are actually following an organ system level of organization. Some of the examples are hookworm, ascaris, etc. You can see that if you are taking the cross section, you can see that there will be a round spherical like structure. So that's why their name is round form. Right. If you are going for the symmetry, you can see that they all are showing the bilateral symmetry. That means when you are uh, cutting through the that na central axis, then only you will get into two equal halves. Right. So there are different different types of worms like that uh, uh, eye worms and the filarial worm. All these are coming under as helminthes and which is showing the bilateral symmetry. If you are checking the germinal layers, they all are triploblastic organism which is having ectoderm, endoderm and mesoderm. The three germ layers are present. So that's why these organisms are triploblastic in nature. Right. You can see that if you are going for the coelom, right. So this is actually a special, this is the only phylum which is having a pseudo coelom. Right. Pseudo means false. So we will have a look like that. It will be looking uh, the same as of coelom. But these coeloms are actually not at all mesodermical originated. And you can see that this will actually looking like a false coelom. Right. So that's why it is known as pseudo coelomate or false coelomate. Right. So you can see that uh, that structure if you are checking, there will be ectoderm, endoderm and mesoderm. So that's why they are triploblastic. But the coeloms are actually the false coelom. You can see that the pouch like structure are there not continuous it's actually in your textbook it's clearly given there will be a small pouches right small small pouches of that uh, coelomic cavity will be there not a continuous structure so that's why it is called a pseudo coelomate if you're checking the habitat they are mostly aquatic and some of them are even terrestrial also right and you can find these organisms as uh, free living forms and parasitic forms and also that now parasitic forms in animals and plants that also you can see that right even free living forms are there like you can see that the aquatic free living free living, uh, free living forms are there like uh, uh, tino notus right tino notus which is an example right uh, tino Notus. Kino notus is an example of aquatic free living organ that uh, uh, as helminthes. Ascaris is one of that actually uh, what we say parasites or uh, uh, that uh, endo parasites in uh, the intestine. You can see that, right? And there are some actually uh, that now uh, some other free living forms are also there. Uh, like you can see that. Uh, Ceno habitatis elegans, right? So these are also some of the forms which we can commonly see, right? And if you are checking the digestive system, you can see that they are having a complete digestive system. That means they will have a mouth and they will have an anus. That means it is a complete digestive system is there. One at a entirely different opening for the, the, taking in the food and eliminating of that excreta. So that is having a complete digestive system. right? And their alimentary canal is actually the tubular form. Hai. And you can see that they have very well muscular the, the pharynx is also there, which is actually uh, for chewing and grinding finding all the food materials and all right and if you are taking the respiratory system that doesn't have any respiratory system respiratory system is entirely absent in asalminthes right circulatory system is also absent but they have a well developed that not developed digestive system circulatory system and respiratory system is absent in asalminthes if you're going for the reproduction methods, right, you can see that these almond as helminthes are dioecious in nature. That means their sexes are separate. Here you can see that male and female as helminthes are there, which is actually entirely separately, right? You can easily find it out, right? Mostly you can see that the uh, female will be somewhat longer than that the male. They are actually undergoing sexual mode of reproduction and here they are showing the internal fertilization also, right? And uh, the development is actually uh, direct or in some cases only you can see that indirect type of development. That means in the larval forms and all you can see that. 
and these al as salamanders have some unique features that means they are actually excretory tubes are present to remove the body waste through the excretory pore right they have special excretory tubes we have already learned that respiratory system or circulatory system to absent eh? but isco special excretory tubes are there which is actually helping for removing the excretory uh, the waste and all uh, through the excretory pore right so here uh, that's actually very uh, as unique feature for this as salamanders right and some other features we already told you these organism will show the sexual dimorphism dimorphism is nothing but you can see that the morphological difference between male and female usko batati hai sexual dimorphism so here one of the example you can see that ascaris is given here male is actually somewhat smaller than the female female actually lengthwise is very big compared to that of male right so female are longer than the males that's why it is shown uh, that now showing the sexual dimorphism uh, by seeing the morphology itself you can say that whether it is a male organism or female organism Uh, some of the major examples are there which is ascaris right so and hookworm you can see that right ascaris which is known as the round worm right and that now and cyclostoma or the hookworms you can see that and whichever area bank of tea which is known as the filarial worm these all are very famous uh, that now uh, as helminthes you can see that ascaris round worm mostly and small kids and all ascariasis is actually caused by this organism hookworm or that now and cyclostoma which is having special hooks present in their mouth like structure so that's why it is known as hook worm and the other one very 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 notorious uh, that na uh, organism that's actually the whicher area bank of tea otherwise known as the filarial worm which is actually responsible for the elephantiasis elephantiasis which is also known as the hathi pav disease right so these are the major examples of as helminthes i hope you have a clear idea about phylum as helminthes thank you for watching thank you for supporting thank you all